your mouth There's a miracle in your mouth When you walk the talk and talk the walk There's a miracle in your mouth There's a miracle in your mouth There's a miracle there you go. Oh, so we're on live now. I guess it just cut off yeah, after the middle of talking. <laughs> There's a miracle in your mouth, in your mouth. Praise the Lord. Uh, here we are. I got with me today uh, Pastor Courtney Williams. Hello, hello. And James. James who? McNamara. James Russell. McNamara, James my brother. James McNamara. has actually been on a couple of, is it twice now? This is the second time. This will be the second time. He was on with me last week. Um, I had Dan oh, Luna on here. that. Or was it the week was before? Last week. Oh, last week was Anaisha. There was Either Anaisha. way, the weeks have been running together. So God's been moving. There's been so much going on, going on, left Amen. and right. Um, yes. it, actually, tomorrow there's going to be a big kind of get together birthday party for uh, Reverend Roy Castro, my grandfather. The Are you going to be there? The evangelist Roy Castro. I will be there Amen. in the house. Amen. Amen. So you want to come on out and see. <laughs> amen, amen. I know that there's going to be a couple surprise singers there too. That uh, oh, there will be. Oh, that, wow. Yeah, that, that, that my grandpa doesn't know about yet. That's tomorrow at um, five o'clock. Is it five o'clock? Yeah, five, five o'clock at, at El Shaddai. El Shaddai on Graham and Calkins Road. You are welcome to come. Oh yeah. If you know Reverend Roy Castro or you know the family and you even just want to come out and have fun, come on out. It's uh, Graham and Calkins Road. There's kind of a Seven Eleven on the corner there, but right behind that is where that church is. It's um, El Shaddai Assembly of God. Correct. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So I just want to remind everybody, too, that Pamela Lockhart will be having um, her dinner for the homeless uh, December 27th. I still do not have a place for that yet, but mm -hmm. we do know the date is December 27th. Yes. We also do now have a date that is October 20th for the Jam for Jesus. I have some flyers. The tickets will be in Monday. Um, those will be for donation for those tickets, too. Going to be a lot of uh, a lot of people that sing around here. There's going to be like Joe Brown, Adonijah Richmond. Um, we're just wow. believing that Marge's child will be there. Childress, is that how you say it? I think so. Marge Childress will be there. Um, I believe that Mike Diego will Mike be Diego there. Uh, Life Giver is going to be there. It's just going to be a great event. There'll be raffles and giveaways and Why? tickets and things like that. It's all to um, help raise money. To Roy support Castro the No Walls uh, tent revivals for Reverend Roy Castro Amen. that he will be putting up on the corners in your cities, around your cities, helping get people saved, um, showing them Jesus and the joy of the Lord. So, yes. um, so we do encourage you to um, to try and make it out to that. You can call me. My number is 810-449-2247. I uh, will have tickets. We'll have flyers. You, Courtney, you can probably get tickets through him. I'll yes. be giving them to everybody to kind of give out to people. Um, I also encourage encourage you to follow along with my blog. Anything that we're talking about on the show is usually put on that blog once a week. That's www.keepingfaithinyourears.com. So what you Woo! got for us today, Courtney? <laughs> well, don't, I just wanted to make mention because you made mention about it. Uh, I'll be on at 2 o'clock yes, also today at the Hour of Compassion with Pastor Pamela Lockhart. Uh, also, Marjai will be on singing for Oh, today. you don't want to miss Marjai. She's I'm good. You, them lazy She's good. Bones, lazy bro. bones. Woo! Look at you, brother. She just turned <laughs> out uh, Mother uh, Mother Kendall's uh, birthday celebration mm -hmm. uh, last, uh, last She actually week. did a little skit with it, and that was kind of cute. Did. It, it did. was really nice. She came in all dressed up, you know. And, with, a, with a nurse? Yeah, with like, in a, the a, church. A, a, like a nurse or a nurse. I couldn't tell it was a nurse. Well, I'm done. Tell you. Hold on. Come on. In, look it in, up. In, in the black church, okay, you have nurses. They're oh, not oh, really it's nurses. a black church. You know what I'm saying? It's not really They're not really nurses, but they could be. But they wear uniform in the church uh, to serve the pastor. Uh, and the first lady, so or or any of the ministers that are on the staff, so they'll bring the pastor water, they'll bring the pastor uh, towels or handkerchiefs. Uh, if there is any 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 problem uh, in the pulpit, uh, uh, comfort wise, yeah. they take care of that. So that's why she came in in this nurse's outfit. Mm. Mm -hmm. See, I, I educated you. Learn something new every day. Write hey, that in your little hey, book. Hey, so that's revelation <laughs> knowledge. I gave you a little bit of that before we even started the show, right? So we all get so, revelation knowledge. See. Some of y'all listening out there know what I'm talking about. So anyway, so she comes in, <laughs> and she's got on this really silver wig underneath yes. her hat. And, and, and then she comes in reading scriptures, and uh, she's got her knee-high stockings on. <laughs> it was 
was wonderful. It was really and good. And then she sung uh, Lazy Bones, and um, I'm, I'm telling you, I was blessed by it. My heart, is, it really goes out to her. I really want to see her go forward. Uh, and oh, do I, think, great I think the Lord's going to lift her. He's going to lift her because she's, right. she's really good. You know, not only... Not only is she, um, she writes these songs on yes. top of it, you yes. know, and she records them, and she's just good. She, she it's from the heart. Yes, you know? yes, so, yeah. So she's, so she's awesome. Tune in today at two o'clock and uh, at our compassion, and we're gonna we're gonna get a chance to spend some time with her. But I wanted to come by today. I mean, you asked me to come by, and I said, well. Should I come by, you know, if, if he had asked me, I'd have said, yes, absolutely. Oh, because it was me. <laughs> because it was me, you had to second guess. Yeah, yeah, I did, I did. I, no, I love, mm-hmm. I love Charity. She's an awesome woman of God. Mm-hmm. Uh, see the see the anointing and call in your life. It's very evident. See, that's one of the things I like. I like people who do ministry who, who are not just uh, in it for titles and in it for positions. You know what I'm saying? People who actually do the ministry that they've been called to do. And the Word of God says that your gift makes room for you and will save you before great men and women. And, and, and I really, truly believe that. And I'm a living, I'm a living testimony of that. And uh, I, I told you I was going to come today and I was going to share my testimony mm. because a lot of people don't get to hear my testimony. And, um, and, and, uh, I, you know, know, I'm going to let you guys know, <laughs> I still have not heard this man's testimony. <laughs> he has not heard my testimony. He still has not told me. And even when I invited him on the show to share it, he still wouldn't even tell me nothing about no, I it. Like, I like, I'm, I'm a little more organized. So I like to talk to the people before oh, you to do. know their testimony. That way, if, if they get a little stumped or something being on the air or whatever, I can throw something out there. It's but but I know I am in the blind here. I'm, <laughs> I'm in the same position every single one of you are. I know, I know nothing of the testimony. Yeah, well, all right. Well, let me, I'll, I'll share. Because I'll share he didn't even want to, he had to think about coming on the show. I had to think about it, I tell you. Because I, I don't share my testimony very often. And I Obviously, my life is, a lot of people would love to live the life that I live. I mean, because I um, I go before, I, I know a lot of people, I've met a lot of people, I've been a lot of places, uh, I've, I've, I've done the Beamers, Hummers, Jags, and Jets, I mean, I've done all maybe that. Maybe he's just Amen. trying to get you to share that more, because it's, it's so through yeah. our testimonies, well, is the evidence. Well, the, the Word of God says that we've overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb. And by the words Word. of our testimony. testimony. So, Amen. so I'm going to share with you today. I had that written down on here today. Amen. Look at that. See, that's, I it. was looking through your notes. Um, <laughs> 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 I'll, I'll, I'll do the woo woo today. <laughs> yeah, hey. Um, but yeah, I, I was raised by a single mom. Mm-hmm. Um, my mom was married so, several times. I mean, um, we we had a lot. I have a lot of stepfathers. Um, some of them are still alive. Some of them have gone on to be with the Lord. But um, when I when I was um, 16 years old, I left home and I uh, came to Michigan uh, to, with the intention of marrying my wife. Uh, while I was here, I got involved because my family had been involved for year uh, for a few years with gangs uh, and mm-hmm. in Muskegon, Michigan, and and also gangs down in my hometown, which is sort of funny, and Cam- in Camden, Arkansas, little old town. Uh, is that where you're from? I'm from I'm from Arkansas. Ooh, uh, Arkansas. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, but but there were. Um, my family helped start some gangs in that in that area, so I was initiated into the gang very at a very young, a pretty fairly young age, sixteen, um, and um, I did end up getting married. Uh, Seventeen years old, I ended up getting married, and uh, but I was still involved uh, with my family. I I've been in ministry prior to that because I was uh, one of those childhood preachers. Uh, someone who's mm-hmm. called as a child and uh, raised up in the Pentecostal church, Church of God in Christ, and. Um, but, you know, I, I got to a point at 17 where, um, well, right, well, right when I turned 18, I, I was at a point where I got very angry with God. I was angry with God because even though um, I was blessed with a, a beautiful wife and uh, we, we did have a place to stay, at least that, and, and things like that, but we didn't have enough. I didn't have enough money just to even buy diapers. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, Lord, if, if, if I really am your child, you know, uh, I need you to provide for me. Uh, the problem was that I was having that conversation just with God. I wasn't having it with anyone else. No one knew that I was going through a crisis of faith. Mm-hmm. No one knew that I was involved in a, in a game that, that, that spanned the entire state of Michigan. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we were, uh, I was initiated into the Crips around, uh, around 17 years old, 
but um, uh, we were working with the Gangster Disciples uh, clear across the I-69 corridor. Mm -hmm. um, they that's were, a pretty big gang, especially oh, back my then, God. Yeah, They were like the top ones. They I were remember here, ones. Crips and uh, something else. Like Crips and Bloods. Bloods, and yeah, the, yeah, they were pretty big in, back then. In Michigan, then. you had the Gangster Disciples and the, and the Vice Lords. So we were, the, the Crips were aligned with the... Um, with the uh, um, with the gangster disciples uh, okay. or GDs, and uh, so anyway, so we work with them, and we that included uh, everything from uh, robberies uh, to selling drugs. Uh, it included um, it included oh, kidnapping yeah. people, oh, wow. uh, extortion. I mean, it, it was a really really rough time. I, I remember uh, during that time, um, actually. A lot of people just got killed. I mean, it was just the bottom line, you know. Um, I, I remember people bleeding to death in my front yard. You know, it was mm -hmm. just, it was one of those. We li I was um, in and around Beecher at that time, mm -hmm. uh, Bucktown. I mean, mm -hmm. in, in 90, uh, that was around 94. Anybody remember Flint around 94? Oh, yeah. Bucktown was not the place to be. Uh, anyway. My graduation year was a year later. So. Yeah. So, but anyway, um, so I was having this crisis uh, with a faith at 18. And um, like I said, I wasn't sharing it with anybody uh, other than my other than my wife and uh, and the other members of our gang, which was mostly family. We were most the, most of the leaders, and things had gotten so bad that I left town. I went to I went to Muskegon for a trip, uh, and while I was in Muskegon, one of our one of the members of our gang, which happened to be a family member, had decided uh, that they couldn't go through with one of the one of the robberies that we had planned. So I stepped up. I don't know what prompted me to step up. Um, they agreed because I was one of the people who would pull the trigger first. I never, I, I was too small to, to fight people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so, uh, um, so you know, my thing was, you're not gonna hurt me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot you first. Take you out. Yeah, I'll take you out. And mm -hmm. um, uh, anyway, so I stepped up, and we arrived to rob the store. And when we robbed the store, things, uh, my muscle, I had, I had two guys that were, were to watch me at all times. Um, one of the reasons why, because I would shoot somebody. So, so they wanted to make sure so you know, use the muscle yeah. first, because yeah. that brother is loco. You know? Oh, so. you're pulling the Mexican slang out, you're loco. Yes, I call him back though. Familiar, uh, anyway, familiar uh, loco. So we got there, and like I said, my muscle, um, things went wrong. My muscle did not respond the way they were supposed to respond. I pulled the trigger on a fully loaded revolver, and the gun did not go off. You had I was aimed point at somebody. blank range. I was I was aim, I was aiming at the store owner, point blank range. I pulled the trigger twice. The gun did not go off. Praise the yeah. Lord. They hit the security, um, hit the security button. The doors to the building locked. Mm. My muscle ran for the door, pretty much dragging me out of there. They grabbed what they could. And they, when they hit the doors, the doors shattered. They literally hit them hard enough, um, running into them, that they literally shattered. So we want. I ran out of the building. So your family actually grabbed you. Yeah, they, they grabbed because me. Because you were like frozen. I I couldn't believe I I couldn't believe. Couldn't even move. Two things. I couldn't believe that the gun hadn't um, hadn't right. gone off. Number one and number two. I can't, I couldn't believe that I'd gotten to the point where I was willing to take an innocent life. Yeah. And um, we got outside the building and. I just was, I was in, out in the middle of a field. Everybody had sort of scattered. Um, Gunshots were ringing all around me mm -hmm. because uh, this gentleman had a gun as well. And he was well armed. Um, and I didn't know what to do. I said, Lord, what do I do? And the Lord just said, hey, um, get somewhere safe. So I, I ran. Uh, the car came in reverse. The car shot across the field near me. I got behind the car. And right as I got behind the car, I went to dodge to go on the other side of the car and a bullet hit right where I just left. Mm. And I got down to the other side of the car and I said, Lord, just get me out of this, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, he did. Uh, we got away at that point in time. A couple of days later, I was, uh, I was still in, Mus in Muskegon, Michigan and uh, out in Northern Shores and the police surrounded my car. Uh, they were looking for the, the the warrant. The bulletin was for uh, four or five guys, four or five black males, mm 
Mm-hmm. And um, so we happened to be riding that deep that day, and uh, and they and they arrested us. Um, I was the one that they made stay in the car. They asked they asked who I was. They told them I was forced to stay in the car until everybody had been gotten out of the car. I was literally in the, in the back seat of my own car. And, they weren't uh, even driving. Wasn't even driving. So they were just looking for four four black males. But when they found out I was the owner of the car. They asked me to stay. Stay in it. So um, they arrested me. Um, I was identified as uh, the person who actually had been at that store um, by my family uh, and the other members of the gang. I pled guilty and served two years. For, um, Meaning, okay, I just want to make sure that I understand and people understand that that they point your own family and friends and yeah pointed to you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They said that we weren't there, but we know him and we know he was there. Mm-hmm. And I did two years. Um, I, I pled guilty just to to avoid testifying against any family members or anything. Mm-hmm. I pled guilty uh, to a lesser charge and I served two years for attempted armed robbery, even though we successfully did it. It was a crazy, you know, technicality. Crazy time, yeah. And um, I remember being in Muskegon County Jail and my attorney had said, man, I think we can get you, get you, you know, a real good deal to get you out of here, you know, um, maybe 90 days. And I'd already been in quite a few, quite a few months because I stayed in. I didn't bond out mm-hmm. um, for the whole trial, you know, for the whole process. And uh, so no one came and bonded you out? No, I didn't. I didn't bond out at all. So um, we were thinking we could get time served or 90 days in a boot camp, you know. Right. Because um, how old are you? Seven? I was at that time. I was 18. 18. Okay. So um, the the spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said that you won't leave this place until you have paid back to the last, you know, to the last cent. And I said, Well, Lord, I said I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I I went to sleep that night and I had a dream and my wife and kid were coming in the courtroom, and then after the court proceeding, they were walking out without me, and I knew that I would be there. Mm -hmm. So two years, uh, almost two years later, October 97, that was in 1994, uh, October of 96, um, I came home. Mm -hmm. Now, when I came home, uh, Charity uh, James, you know, I really, I didn't know what to do. Oh, yeah. You know, two years in there. I'd already, you know, I'd had such a major crisis of faith before. Mm-hmm. Here I was on the street again, and I'm like, you know, you know, well, being locked up is three hots and a cot. You know, they give you a little job <laughs> to do. You know what I'm saying? It's no you, fun. You're, you're, no, it's no fun. Been there before. <laughs> your, your life is structured down to the to when you wake up and when you go to oh, sleep. They tell you when to eat. They tell you when to eat. When you go outside. Exactly, exactly. And 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 to have a life of that much order and then to come back out. To that freedom. To freedom. And and not just freedom, but to come out to a, a life where if if you don't have any order in your life, or if you don't have a plan for order in your life. You feel you really out of feel sorts. like out of control. So like things are out of control. Well then right. you gotta get a job and you got this. Yes, so exactly. you wasn't prepared to walk out the Wasn't door. totally prepared. Um you know but what I did learn while I was in there um was a couple things. One thing that I learned was that um if you want to change anything in the world uh, or in your life, you have to change yourself first. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. You know, everything really starts uh, starts with you. The second thing I learned was that you're not an island. My biggest problem when I was 18 was, when I was 17 and 18, was that I did not communicate with people mm-hmm. to say, this is what I'm going through. You know what I'm saying? This is what I'm dealing with. You know, um, confession is made with your mouth. That's if you right. don't open up your mouth and say something, no one will ever know. That's right. Uh, if you don't name your sin, if you don't name your struggle, nobody will ever know. Uh, and, 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 and then mm-hmm. for you to be angry with them or even with God. You cannot, you can't, you can't do it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, because yeah, it's like putting that pride down. Right. It's letting it down, being humble, right. letting it go. Right. Paul says, with the mouth, confession is made to salvation. salvation. If you right. don't speak it, you can't You can't get the salvation. Right. And um, so, you know, those are the two things that I really learned solidly. 
thank thankfully I put those things in action. It took oh, it took years. Um, you know, I I I came out. I said, you know, if I've got to work. Uh, if I got to work a part-time job, I got to work a part-time job. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's um, what I do. Well, I got to do what I got to do. Yourself. You know, I got to humble myself. Yeah. Uh, there's no, there's no get rich quick scheme. You know, there's no, I mean, any easy money ain't always good money. <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. You know, somebody yeah. always wants to say there's a, a get rich quick, but there's really not. I know. I know. It takes time. It takes right. money, and you usually have to put money in. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, right. if you want it to really be prosperous. Right. And, and I tried to, you know, I really started to. Um, 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 I tried to live the right life. I mean, like I said, I don't want people to think that it was a, I was an instantaneous. I went from getting out of the joint, uh, serving my bit to, to actually being where I am today. Um, some of, some people listening probably don't even know where I am today, but we'll get to that. But you know, it, it, it was a process. I, I, mm-hmm. I still, I, I have to admit, and I'm, I'm naming this today. I still dealt drugs. You know what I'm saying? I still sold drugs. Mm-hmm. Um, I was a pimp for a while. Um, I had girls working uh, in, in different cities for me. Um, I was, um, you know, I was doing a whole lot of stuff, you know. And so, um, so yeah. it was kind of like you're you're depending upon self. Yeah, I was him. still depending on, self, depending on self, you know, but I was making at that time I was making baby steps, you know, mm-hmm. because I mean, truthfully, I was like, you know, God, I want to trust you, but uh, I got to get this rent paid. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so I need to re up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, I oh, he, you know, he wanted it right then. And yeah, I, I remember, you know, I, I started um, um, I got a blessing one year. Uh, where um, and I own different businesses even throughout that that were legitimate. I mean, mm-hmm. I own um, the, the Lord blessed me. I owned a, a video game repair business called the Game Doctors in Flint. Um, I um, worked for a, 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 a multi-millionaire right here in the city. I'm not going to name his name, but I was his administrative assistant. It was charity, wasn't and, it? And oh, yeah, praise oh, the dear. Lord, praise <laughs> the Lord. Um, <laughs> so um, you know, and uh, then uh, in 2000, my stepfather, one of my mom's ex-husbands. Uh, introduced me to the limousine business and I got in the limo business and that really worked for me a lot you know uh, and you know things just sort of kept on moving I did get back in ministry um, I Where's started preaching again mm-hmm. I, I realized that that was my destiny this is what God had called me for mm-hmm. uh, so you know I, I, I still uh, managed to do that and um, you know once I once I got introduced to the limo business in 2000 Things in my life really started to just sort of level out, you know. Mm-hmm. They really, they really did. And I, I like I said, I, I, I was making sure that I communicated what was going on in my life with different people that I knew I could trust. Um, I was off paper by then, you know. Uh, I did, I did two years on parole, um, you know, and I was making those moves to, to, to really uh, try to make sure that I was fulfilling what what God had uh, spoken over my life. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the things I had said when I first got out was that mm-hmm. I would never be the reason that uh, someone else would be hurt uh, again. Mm-hmm. I never wanted to be the reason that anyone was hurt again. And once I finally stopped dealing drugs, I remember uh, that was right before, right around 2000, uh, a gentleman called me and said, uh, I need so many pounds. And I said, dude, pounds of weed. I said, oh, man. Dude, uh, when you need it, you're you know? trying to get right. The devil's I'm gonna to bring right, him. He's gonna know? bring him at you for sure. And uh, I said, "Listen, let me see what I can do." But it was freaking me out of my mind. You know, this little dude had been selling for me for a very short period of time, but he was selling out of everything I could put in his hands. I mm-hmm. couldn't keep up with this little guy, you know. Uh, he was so probably he was making it happen. Yeah, he was making it happen. <laughs> He's probably 16, 17 years old, just killing him out there. And he calls me up and he asked me for like three pounds. And I said, dude, what am I going to, you know, let me think about it. Let me see what I can get done. And when I hung up the phone, I was riding with a fellow, a friend of mine. And and this friend of mine, who was a Christian uh, at that time, said, "Um, well, how much do you need? Mm -hmm. And I knew I could get 10 pounds off a boat in Muskegon. Uh, for for um, for a reasonable amount of money, shall I say five five grand? That's five hundred a pound. Uh, so I was going to almost double my money selling to this little guy. And um, I said, "Man, that's all I need." And and my friend says, "We'll stop by the bank and have, make it happen." And I said, "That's when I said, you know what." <laughs> You know, that's the right people at the right, right place at the right said, time. You're riding with a friend who's going to give you the money to get it. Do you know, know what I'm saying? I said, you know, that, at that point in time, I said, you know, 
fast money, you know, ain't always good money. Mm-mm. That's what I said in my mind. I said, you know, if the enemy is going to make it this that easy, easy for me, mm-hmm. this it's may be that, yeah, mm-hmm. this may be a trap, you know, because it was so easy for me to walk in that store. They knew I was local. They knew I was crazy. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't tell you, but after we got away um, with that robbery, before they came and, 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 and arrested me, I took that gun. I put it out the window at the house that I was staying in in Muskegon, and I pulled the trigger three yeah, times, and it went off, went off every, every single, single time. time. It went off every single time. That's the Lord. There. I said, so if the enemy is willing to make it this easy again in 2000, um, then um, I know this must be the end. I know this cannot be. <laughs> this mm-hmm. God yeah. does not have this for my life, mm-hmm. and this is more than likely a trap of the enemy. Mm-hmm. Because uh, trust me, just like uh, uh, <laughs> just like God will God pays us with his promises and his blessings the enemy pays us with um with um, poverty debt and lack you know mm, what i'm saying yes he does yes um, he does and um because his job is to steal kill and destroy mm-hmm. god's job is to bring you life and life more abundantly so i you know i, I still i walked away from that mm-hmm. and uh god just really started bringing bringing my life together more and more i went into the you know went into the church where i'm serving currently Mm-hmm. Uh, the church system where I'm ser- serving currently, and and God began to bless me over and over there. Um, I still had to work, I still had had a mm-hmm. regular job, and all those kinds of things. And then eventually, one day in January of this year, God said, "Hey, don't do that anymore. I want you to just strictly be focused on ministry." And God has provided over and over again. And what God is doing now, I'll get a chance to tell you about it uh, next time I'm with you. Mm-hmm. But uh, let's just say that. Um, uh, the God's promises are yes and amen to those who believe. So, amen, amen. <laughs> so that's where I'm from. You know, that's 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 what that's uh, that's that's the life that God. That's the testimony. Oh, that, that God is. Has I mean, you had a point. Have. You were you were going to take another human life. I was literally going to take another human's life and, and actually pull the trigger the to do yes, so. Yes, I actually. You know. You know. And that to this day, that's probably one of the biggest miracles. That I've ever seen because that that guy lived to talk about it. I lived to talk. We both lived to talk about it. Now, do you did you talk to him after that? No, fact, I've never no? never met him again. Never met him again. But he no. knows it happened. He, he knows, knows you happened. pulled that trigger three he times knows. and it did not. Come oh, out. he's not crazy. Now, if that ain't a work of God, people. And then you pull the trigger when you get home and it goes off it goes all three off, times. All three times. Everybody was stunned. Everybody was stunned. But uh, God is able. And I say, you know, I share the testimony to say that God is able to transform your life. The promises that God has made, because it was spoken over me when I was a kid that I would be, that I would be a minute, that I would be a pastor. That was spoken when I was in diapers. You know what I'm saying? Um, and even you though. You can't change the word of God. You cannot. And especially if, if he gives somebody a word to speak over somebody mm-hmm. else. And this is God's plan for you and what God says. That is still his plan. Whether it happens a little bit later because of our mm-hmm. own free will and things we choose to do, mm-hmm. it will still be his plan. It's still his plan. When I was in um, a St. Louis Temporary Correctional Facility up in mid-Michigan, um, there, a pastor came in one time, and the guy got ready to preach, and he and he started he just wigged out like he was like, I can't I can't say anything, and I said I'm looking like what's up? I'm sitting in like almost in the back of the building. I got my Bible with me and everything, because you know we have church mm-hmm. in prison too. And mm-hmm. uh, I got my Bible with me, and I'm just listening. And he's shaking, and he says, "I can't. I just can't preach." And he says, "You know what? God has called one of you." He says, "And I'm not going to be. I need to be sitting, learning from you." And he and he starts walking around the building. No one is directing this guy. He just starts walking. It's like 30, 40 of us in this room. Mm-hmm. He starts walking around the building, and he takes the microphone. And he sits it right in my hand. Mm. Holy Spirit was directed. Mm-hmm. And I taught Nobody that, was. yeah, and I preached that service from then on, you know. Um, and um, and then took over the entire uh, chaplaincy program mm-hmm. on the on that St. Louis prison uh, campus because uh, wow. the Spirit of God was just so, you know, was working with me so heavily. Mm-hmm. And uh, so no matter what the situation, and God wasn't done. Taking me to where he he, want, he wanted me to be right. at right. that point. God still ain't done. done. You were thinking about leaving us and huh? going to Florida, huh? Hey, hey. He was thinking was going about to it. Florida. He was thinking. I was going to go to Florida. But, to but what's, the the <laughs> what's the plan now? What's the plan now? 
I, what's I, the plan I, now? But you know, I, I, I still I met someone the other day. They were, uh, Lord, fresh out. You know what I'm saying? He can change I'm, anything. I'm standing, standing there, and the guy's like, I'm pretty much fresh out. Pastor, he's talking to his pastor, saying I'm fresh out. This and that, but I'm um I'm, I'm two. What was it? He was about two years sober already, you know. And uh, and he was like, man, you know, I know God has a plan for my life. And I said, brother, I've been I I've been out for nineteen years, you know. Mm-hmm. And I said, I've gone from being. Everybody said, listen, you're a convict or you're an ex-con mm-hmm. or you're a felon. And they said, I never get good jobs. They, want to they be said, I never do. <laughs> you know, they said, I never do be able to do anything else. And um, I'm telling you, I saw God blind people's eyes to my to my um, record. Mm-hmm. Um, one la- I, my first big job when I came out, the lady said, "If you have a felony conviction, you cannot work here." I prayed. I said, "God, I need you to blind their eyes." I went. She says, "Go get this report." I went and got this report. The report specifically says that I had a convict felony conviction in 1994. She took the report, looked at the report, put it in her safe, and said, "You're hired." Amen. You know what I'm saying? That's how good I went God to Detroit, is. Michigan. That's how good he yep. is. I went to Detroit, Michigan in 2000, and I was getting ready to go to work for Metro Cars. Metro Car said, if you have a felony conviction, you will not get a job here. I was working at the airport, and this was before 9-11. And um, I went, I said, Lord, what do I do? The Spirit of the Lord said, go to, go to the Detroit uh, uh, courthouse and get a, a clearance, the Detroit police station. I went down to the city of, the, of Detroit. I got the clearance. Mm-hmm. I brought it back, and that clearance said, there are no felonies on record this was in 2000 i took it down there i worked for metro cars for about four or five years you know (laughs) they say all kinds of things about us you know Mm -hmm. and 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 i was in a i was in a meeting just not too long ago and this one guy kept hounding me he says man what is it about you? What's what's going on? What's your story? He says because Proverbs it's something eighteen twenty one. You said all tell this stuff. Tell me Proverbs eighteen twenty one. Come on, what is that? Come on, you tell me what is that? Come I know on, what it is. That's what I am. Come the on. power of life and death are in the tongue. The you got to speak and claim it. That's come right. Come on, come on. So, so you know, I so I shared that. Te- I shared my testimony with him, and he was like, "Oh my gosh, you know, I couldn't." It's, he says, I knew it was something, you know, mm-hmm. but I mean, they say we can't do this or we can't do that. I was told by housing development that I would not be able to get a house in there if I had a felony conviction. I was making a huge amount of money at that time. I said to the lady, I said, listen, I'll fill out the paperwork, but I'm telling you, I'm a convicted felon. And she says, I didn't hear that. Just fill out the paperwork. Amen. So she, the paperwork came back and it said there were no felonies. Wow. Before, after eight, that's there were no felonies after eighteen or something like that. And I said, "Whoa!" And she was like, "Which, which house do you want?" You know, I mean, it was like, you know, so so God's favor. I was sitting in um, a room uh, in in two thousand and four, I think two thousand four, two thousand five, and um, they said to me, "They says, uh, why should we let you be a pastor in our denomination?" And I said, "You know." This is what God has called me for. Whether you acknowledge it or not, I'm going to continue to do what God called Amen, me to that's do. That's right. And uh, they because sent me out the room. Won't, you know, and they try to take. Yeah, they sent me out the room. I came back. People had tears welling down their face, and they said, "We welcome you in." Amen. I had packed my bags at the church that I was serving at. I left a note on the on the desk with the keys to the building. For the person who would come after me because I knew that by their policies that they would not be able to accept me. But I went to that meeting and God turned their hearts towards me. Amen. You know, but um, God, Amen. God, if, if God has called you and purposed you and ordained something in your life, God is going to be faithful to yes. do it. No matter what your situation is, no matter what you've done with your life, you could, um, you know, you could have been a thief, you could have mm-hmm. been a, a, um, you could have been a, a prostitute or a pimp. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You could have done anything in your life that the world says that change. damages you. The whole point but of it, it doesn't, doesn't change. change his love for you. It doesn't change his plan for you. It doesn't change that yeah. you are still his. Amen. He still Amen. wants you. I, you know what? So let's get into this Galatian thing because because <laughs> I want to say some things about Paul and Galatia, uh, the church at Galatia, and, and, and really 
that that ties right back in because people don't some people don't realize that 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 Paul was specifically a murderer. Yeah. The guy was not. I mean, even though he was doing what he was doing for the for the um for the Jew uh, for the Jewish temple, he literally mm -hmm. was a murderer. murderer. Yes. Okay. And 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 but what he what he does is talk about the promises. And, and the blessing and the blessing and the covenant and and the covenant <laughs> and and he but but he frames it in such a way that you you got to understand that it's not predicated on what you have done that's right with your life it's predicated faith. on what you believe that's right by right faith. now by right. faith oh my okay. god well abraham if we even go way back to abraham which galatians just galatians is a reference to the promise and yes. in the covenant God made in mm -hmm. Genesis 3. Yes, come when on. When he told him, come on. because of his faith and his belief in him, he received the blessings. Mm -hmm. So what are those blessings? Those blessings was the land, the prosperity, the favor, the dominion. Mm -hmm. But his covenant was when he actually said that your heirs mm -hmm. will be yes. what? Yes, they will be they blessed. They will be saved mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by Come on, I'm going to have to tell me. They will be saved by faith. So that covenant was actually him telling him that through his obedience, through his belief in God, through his listening to him, no matter what people said to him, no matter who t attacked him, his family, whatever, he trusted in the Lord, he believed in him, he received the blessings and got that covenant for, the, for every man. It was for all men. It wasn't yeah. just for one. And he made it to Christ and him, actually. And Abraham did not get everything right. That's right. That's Abraham right. did not get everything right. See, you got to understand that God is not married to the super religious. That's right. God is married to the backslider. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? He's right. got, he has a covenant. To the believer. To well, the believer. He literally says, I am married to, to the, the backslider. backslider. You know, a righteous man falls seven times, but seven times does he get back up mm -hmm. and go along his way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And in other words, God understands um, that we are carnal, That's you know, right. but we are... <laughs> Come on, get but it out, brother. His get power, it. Through, the, through his power of the Holy Ghost, uh, we are sanctified and set apart. That's Amen. right. We're sealed to the day of redemption, okay? But. Because sanctification through, means separation. Through his, through his, Holy. through his, through the shedding of his blood, we are covered. And we are made righteous. righteous. So, so we're not we're not made righteous by our own actions. We're made righteous, righteous. by the act of Jesus Christ yes. on Calvary's cross. So it doesn't matter what you've done. So when Abraham when Abraham goes in and sleeps with uh, sleeps with his wife's uh, maid servant, mm -hmm. he does <laughs> and has Ishmael. Mm -hmm. He's still under the covenant that God has made with him. Amen? Yeah, amen. You know, but he has been covered because he had faith. faith. That's right. And his faith yes. was counted to him as righteousness. Now, this is pre-Jesus, right. right? This is pre-Jesus yep. dying on the cross. But, but, but his faith... <laughs> covered the curse of the law. Ooh. Covered the curse of the law. But, so then what comes later to cover the curse of the law for everybody else? Come on. Come Who on. is it? It's Jesus, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's Amen. Jesus. That's why you have to have faith in Jesus. Just as Abraham had that faith that covered that curse of that law. Mm -hmm. We have that faith in Jesus and that covers that curse for us. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you talk. Go ahead. Amen. No, you go right ahead. I just had to throw I, it in I, there. <laughs> so Paul in Galatians has a job to do. He's mm. he's birthing the new, really truly expanding and birthing out That's the New right. Testament church. But in doing so, he's fighting. There's a tension mm. in Galatians, and that tension is between uh, Paul and who's coming out of the the, the Jewish system. Amen. Mm -hmm. He's coming out of a law uh, a law driven system. He is he, he's fighting with that to let them know that Christ has connected us not with the religious law, you know, not with you can't you can't touch your wife after she's uh, after she's had her monthly, he, you know, th those those types of issues, not not the you can't be in the assembly if you're not circumcised. He says we're not connected to that. We're connected to the covenant mm. and the promise right. that God has made with faithful Abraham faithful. through Christ. 
Faithful and that's what Abraham. we're connected with. That's what we're connected yes. with. We're not connected to a religious order. We're right. connected to a relationship that God had with Abraham. <laughs> Come on, brother. He says, and the law is not of faith. It is of works. It, oh, oh, Lord right? have mercy. But, but the man that doeth them, the law, shall live in them and be judged by them. So, so no. I'm going to say, if you want to walk and you want to live by the law, you want to be judged by that law? The, or you want to walk and live by Jesus and be covered by Jesus the, and have that for your judgment? He takes the curse. Paul, Paul is trying to get them to understand that the law can only lead to one thing. That's right. And what he's talking about is the strategic observance of the Levitical law. Mm -hmm. That's what he's talking about. And, and, and because there was, a, there was a confusion that yeah. Abraham was under a law, but Abraham wasn't was under a law. Nope. Abraham was under a covenant. The law didn't come uh, uh, until later. So, so, so what, what he's saying is if, you, if, you're, if your focus is to be strategically observant to a set of rules, then that law, the Levitical law, only leads to one thing. Well, and that's death. death. And they need to understand that, yes, the law is holy. It is perfect. It is of God. But you are in the flesh. You cannot meet the requirements of that law. If you want to live by that law, you're going to have to meet every demand of that law or you will fall back under that curse. And you cannot do it in the flesh, which is why you needed Jesus Christ. That's why you needed Jesus. Amen. That's right. Don't... It's, Paul, Paul, Paul was t in the in the third chapter. I think where we at third chapter. Mm -hmm. I think it was the fifth verse. The um, we're on the fifth verse here. Here, I got five written down right here for you. <laughs> Spirit and work miracle. Um, Paul was trying to point out to them for all who rely on the works of the law. That's verse ten. Mm -hmm. Are under a curse. Curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone who does not observe and obey all the things written in the book. Of the law. Verse 11 says, Now it is evident that no one is justified before God mm -hmm. by the law. Yes. For the one who is righteous will live by, by faith, faith, but the law does not rest on faith. On the contrary, whoever does the works of the law will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the mm -hmm. uh, curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. In order that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles so that we might receive the promise of the Holy Spirit through faith. Um, verse 1 of chapter 3 says, and this is one of the things I like about Paul, because Paul is always concerned about us being ignorant. Ignorant. Yep. Paul is concerned about us not getting it, not really getting the big picture. And who else to get the big picture than Paul, who had already been mm -hmm. uh, a member of the Sanhedrin. He, he had already been a faithful Jew, and he had already had a personal encounter with Jesus Christ that had brought him into the knowledge of salvation. Amen. He says in verse three, uh, chapter 3, verse 1, he right. says, You foolish Galatians, mm -hmm. who has bewitched you? It was before you. Who has blinded you? Who has lied to you? They sat there and, and it, it basically, I wrote the same thing this morning. He says, he calls them foolish, saying Jesus was, pretty much this is what he's saying, is Jesus was crucified right in front of you before your eyes. So why are you letting the enemy or anybody else blind you or move you from the truth of Jesus? He goes on to say in verse 2, he says, the only thing I want to learn from you is this. I don't want to know one thing from you since you're so smart. Yep. Did you receive the Spirit by doing the works of the law Ooh, or by you. believing what you heard? Amen. Amen. That's it. I mean, so, <laughs> you know, so, you know, that's one of the things that I'm blessed by. In the 1990s, church, uh, churches we knew and had began to evolve because so many churches were, were so, so, so religiously structured. Mm -hmm. Like you couldn't wear, you couldn't wear long dresses. Mm -hmm. um, a man had to cut his hair and his fingernails and he had to wear a black suit to church. And I mean, it was just, you couldn't watch TV. You couldn't go to the game. I mean, there was so, so much religiosity uh, within the church and things really began to transform. So that by the 2000s, people have started getting out of those things and just uh, starting to understand that you don't receive the Holy Spirit by what you wear. 
You don't receive the Holy Spirit by, by what you do, right? By <laughs> what you do, by by all, all if you just by obeying the rules of a church or a religious structure, you receive the Holy Spirit by what you have heard. Mm-hmm. Word of yeah, God. the word right. of God. The word of God says that how can they uh, how can they hear unless there's a preacher? You know what I'm saying? So if, if if someone is ministering the gospel to you, God's promise to you, the word of God to you, then your faith comes by what you hear. Here. Gotta feed your spirit man. Mm. Feed your spirit man through them ears. Go ahead. I'm, I'm done. No. I'm done. What, you done. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm done. I'm just, I'm just yeah. going to shake my head. But Paul, but Paul was frustrated. And I get frustrated at believers too. You know, um, I, I was talking to somebody the other day and they were telling me, uh, they said, you know, um, uh, uh, my son can't get a, uh, can't get a job because he's, um, because he's uh, an ex-offender and it's depressing him. What is she speaking? She's speaking it out of her mouth too. I was like, she don't right. know who you know who you talk. You must don't know who you talk to. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, if you want me to have sympathy for you, I have a I have a conviction for armed robbery. It is the second most serious conviction that you can well, second or third most serious conviction that you can get uh, in in the state of Michigan. Like Fifteen year felony. That's, it, it is definitely it is a twenty year. It is a 20-year sentence. I was sentenced to 3 to 20 years in state prison, okay? Um, put it to you like this. When I arrived on the, on the block, and I was uh, 18 years old, I was real skinny, and they were like, hey, bud, what are you in for? And I said, armed robbery. Let's just say the gates parted. I was led to the front of the line. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because I'm telling you, it's one of the three most serious. It's the second most serious one that they feel is a crime that they should respect you for. Right. Mm -hmm. So so there's murder and there's armed robbery. Those are the two crimes that you get the most respect for when you go to the joint. You know what I'm saying? Cold in the it, arena. That's how it rolls. Okay. Ezekiel, with huh? your dry bones. Come on now. Now, now what, is it, what does he say to Ezekiel when Ezekiel so, asks him? He says to prophesy to these bones. Prophesy mm -hmm. to the bone. So there's power in your there's mouth. There's power in you your speak. mouth. So, you know, but so when she said it, I said, man, you know, what kind of excuse is that? You know, it, it frustrates me. Mm -hmm. You don't have to live a life of lack. You That's don't right. have to live a, 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 a life that is not 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 benefiting from all the promises that God has made in your life and over your life Amen. or that he has given you through the word. You can live in abundance and you don't have to do it by hitting a block. You don't have to do it by taking from somebody else. Amen. God has already given you everything that pertains to life and life more abundantly. But it starts with you hearing the good news. And then with you believing in your heart and, and using then your with faith. you using your mouth to confess Amen. it out of your mouth, then your salvation comes to you. Then God will order, reorder your life and, and, and pour out to you all the blessings that he has made to faithful so Abraham. Say, them more, say that in order for me again. Woo. I want him to get this. Say that Woo. over again. It starts where? You've got to hear. Hear, <laughs> which means... <laughs> You renew in your mind. That's right. You would be careful what you're letting into your ears. Amen. And then you have to believe in your heart. In your heart. Right. And, and then, then you have to confess it with your, with mouth. your mouth. Prophesy over it. Told That's that. right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What are your life? Spirit. Huh? With, with your heart there. Yes, mean, your spirit. Your spirit. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 in your spirit, man. That's right, that's right. That's what becomes new. They, exactly. David says, Thine word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. If that word is inside of you, the word of God says, Out of the abundance of the heart, or abundance of your spirit, man, the mouth Shall speaks. Speak. Amen. Well, that's what he told Ezekiel. Woo. He said to prophesy over these bones and say to them, Hear the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So how do we get things to move in our lives? How do we get things that have happened or whatever to be gone? The word, the of, word the of God. In 2001, I got you under... You actually speak it yourself over it. In 2001, I got under a solid word teaching church. And it, it really did push me in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Once I passed up on the deal in 2000 um, to, to really become a, a serious, serious drug dealer... Um, in 2001, so Lord, I you went. Pass that up, brother. I mean, amen, amen, uh, amen. Amen. I'd already been down some of the roads. So. You are a blessing. You really <laughs> I are. I'm a than a <laughs> I know. Amen. I think so too. Amen. The benefits are better. Amen. amen. So you know, um, but I got under a strong word teaching church. 
everywhere my pastor went, I was. See, there's I, a I, difference there, what you just said. You said mm -hmm. teaching. Yes, yes, Not yes. preaching, teaching. Yes, preaching is proclamation of the yes. gospel. And people do need to hear good preaching because it, it, it draws them in and say and gets them saved. Um, but Teaching is 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 the skillful instruction Amen. of the word, right. and 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 I mean, if you get into a real strong teaching church, mm -hmm. it will transform your life. Uh, I be, I began to to realize that I had to make I had to confess things. I had to to say them out of my mouth. No matter what and you think, no, no matter, matter what, what you feel, no mm -hmm. matter what anybody else is saying to you, because you're gonna have people going. Yes. You ain't nobody. You ain't no good. Look at you. I know, right? You can't do that. Right. <laughs> you owe me this. You better do what I say. You better make me happy. Amen. It ain't about you. It's about me. Hey, don't make me get you. Amen. Huh. Hey, so, but you so you know what you got to do? Cut what are you letting let? What are you, you letting in that ear? Sometimes, what are you speaking? Sometimes you have to cut yourself off from everything. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, that's not that's not of God. And, and, I, and I had to do that. And, and what I found was when I arrived at that church that um, a group of, of, of ex-felons were literally members of that church and were strongly working in all areas of ministry there. And they surrounded me. Um, and, and like I said, I just went everywhere my pastor went. I, I, I picked up every book that he had. I, I just, I mean, you know, uh, um, um, uh, Lord have mercy. I can't think of the Tom Thompson, uh, Leroy Thompson. I read a lot of books by Leroy Thompson, read a lot of great faith teachers, um, uh, um, books. And, and I just really just buried myself in that. And, and I'm telling you, it, it totally transformed my life, my financial situation, my family situation, and, and, and everything. And, and your view of yourself, because right. it, we have to view ourselves as God views us. Right. We can't look at ourselves as we do, because we're going to see the flesh, we're going to see the mistakes, we're going to see what people point out to us. Right. And what we need to do is see ourselves as God sees as God us. Sees us. Right. And I Amen. believe we have to be doers of the word also. We have to. Which brings me back to your testimony, which was awesome. I got a lot out of it. Praise God. But one thing I got out of it is... He can use anybody. He can. He's a crazy gangster. That's right. You know, all throughout the Bible, yeah. he used people that Amen. were doing all the wrong things. That's right. But I believe that we were, were all called. Amen. We are. It's whether we answer that call or not. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. Because, because attacks and fear Ephesians, and things are going to come at you. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 1, 4 and 5 says, Even as in his love he chose us. He actually picked us out for himself as mm. his own Amen. Mm. in Christ before the foundation of the world, mm. that we should be holy, consecrated, and set apart for him, and mm. blameless in his sight. Mm. Mm. You know, for he ordained us, destined us, planned in love for us to be adopted as his own children. Mm. So, mm. you know, we got to answer that call. Got to. And you, you need to understand, too, is, is once you do hear the voice of the Lord, or you do start getting revelations and people men of God and people that are following and hearing them telling you things that enemy's coming <laughs> yeah. he's coming hard he's coming to take yes, that he word he's coming to attack you he's coming to stop yes, you so that's yes, why it is. is so important to be careful what you're allowing into your ears what you're listening to what you're speaking out of your mouth are you agreeing with what the word of God says about you or are you agreeing with what the world says about you or what this man says about you right, you know I just wrote a blog about God speaking mm -hmm. we have to be God speaking well, if come you on, want man. if you want the spiritual and you want what God has and what God has already given to you to come here into the natural, how do you get it? Yeah. You have to speak, speak spiritual to allow it to manifest into the natural. Hey, the word, the word if you speak them. natural, you're limited to the natural. If you speak your this, you're going to be limited to that. Right, That's what right, you're going to be. Right. And I'm telling you, like I said, I, uh, you know, uh, the word of God says, have the faith of God calling those things that be not as though so they, they were. Are. In other words, that scripture says, have the God kind of faith. And, and I'm telling you, um, you know, I, I've, I've, I've sat next to and stood next to some of the most powerful people in the world, uh, some of the wealthiest people in the world. I've ridden on the private jets. I've done all that stuff. I don't have a college degree. Um, I've, a matter of fact, the last two years, I have been studying at Duke School of Divinity, one of the most premier divinity schools in the entire country, me, who was a high school dropout. I didn't finish high school until I got to prison. and. Me, who who never finished college, does not have a college degree, but I'm right there studying on the campus of Duke School of Divinity and 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 being instructed by 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 these great professors. And I'm I'm like, you know what, God, this is all God's doing, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but I had to change my life, and I had to change my confession 
for my life. The least of these. And 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 God had already called me and ordained me and predestined me for the foundation of the world. Right. And I just had to submit to that. And I'm telling you, it's been a wonderful, wonderful Hebrews journey. Hebrews 11, 11? Yes. Faith is he was obedient. The substance of things over for you. Yeah, now all Amen. Yeah. 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 So we got about obedient. five minutes left, so I'm going to cut these guys off here. Because Man. there's a fire there. Man. We could keep going. We could keep going all day long, right? Uh, I just want to remind everybody, the Hour of Compassion comes on in one hour at 2 o'clock here on FlintTalkRadio.com. Amen. I am also here, Faith and Hope with Charity, every Friday at noon live. You can call in. The number is 810-208-1854. Myself phone number is 810-449-2247. You can call me about Pam's uh, cook, uh, Cooking for the Homeless. You yes. can call me about the Jam for Jesus that's coming up. I'll have a lot more information on that for you guys. Um, you can even call me if you just want prayer, if you just want something to share, or even if you have a testimony of something that God's done great in your life or a miracle that's happened, I'll bring you on the show. Give me a call. You know, yes. so I'm going to let Pastor Courtney Williams close us out here today. Say the prayer. If there's anybody of you out there that you're not saved um, or you just don't even know if you are, you know, all you have to do is believe. You might not yes. understand it right now, but just say the prayer after him. We will say it with you. Me and my brother will say it with you, and, and, and God will start working in your life. So I'm going to give it over to uh, Thank you so much. Great honor. Pastor Courtney Williams. That's my little yeah, That's my little And, and, and hey, prison. Hey, my yeah. kids taught me. Different ways. My kids taught me to say that's how, that's how I Roll. Hey Amen. It is better. That's how honey rolls. You know what? Rolls that way. I, I, I have, uh, you know, I really feel an unction to pray for him, for my convict friends out there, Amen. my brothers and sisters who have gone through the same struggles, and and you have been tried in the fire. Uh, I'm here to tell you that God can bring you out like pure gold, and God's plans for you are yes and amen, and they are not over. And and no matter what you've done, He can connect you with His promises. Mm. Let's pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, I ask that you reach out and touch each and every convict out there. Those that are behind prison walls and preparing to come out. Those who may never come out, oh God. And those who have been uh, paroled and, 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 and on probation, oh God. And Lord, who've come off, even come off paper, oh God. Lord, right now, I ask that you reach out and touch them, oh God. That you, that their hearts will become strangely warmed for the promises that you have for them, oh God. For your purpose that you have ordained and situated for their lives, O oh God. I ask that they submit to it right now, O oh God. Lord, that their that their that their latter reign will be greater than their former reign, Lord. Lord, that their testimony, O oh God, will not just end at I was convicted of yes. such and such, O oh God. But Lord, that they would that their testimony will be that I was created mm. for so yes. much more. I ask that you give them more by the power of the Holy Ghost. I counsel every contract of the enemy against their lives, O oh God, and I ask that you protect the seeds that you have planted in them, O oh Lord, and that you fulfill the promise in their life yes. to the very end. I break every yoke of bondage, yes. every yoke of addiction, every yoke of illness in their lives, every yoke of financial depression, O oh God, of physical depression and mental depression, O oh God. We break that yoke in Jesus' name. And Lord, if there's any of them, that, that anybody out there under the sound of my voice that does not know you as Savior and Lord Jesus, I ask that they pray this prayer with me today. Father, Father. Father. I confess my sins. I, confess my sins. I submit myself to you. I, I, be I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart. On the Lord Jesus. On the Lord Jesus. And that you raised him from the dead. And that you raised him from the dead. I believe. I believe that I am saved. That I am saved. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Lord, protect Amen. them. Lead them to a Bible-believing yes. church, O oh God. Set a hedge of protection around about them. Don't let the enemy come to this. To, to, to steal what you've already planted in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, God. Oh, Amen. 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 I'm so thankful to awesome. have Courtney here today, my brother Amen. James. Um, I'm just going to tell you guys again one more time, the jam, uh, No Walls Jam for Jesus is going to be October 20th. We're going to have a lot of people out there. If you watch the Hour of Compassion, Mark oh, yeah. Jay Childers will be on Mark here today. And uh, yeah, Marcus will be on there. That's Life Giver. He'll be on life there. Giver. Yeah. And um, so you can get 
get a little glimpse of her, I think they're going to have her sing a song probably today. Oh, yeah, she's going to sing. <laughs> oh, she's good. She better she come ready for work. Good. We're also going to have Joe Brown. I don't know if you guys know who he is. He's a rapper. Um, wow. So there's going to be a lot of different things going yeah. on. Right. Um, we've got Adonijah Richmond. Compl he is so anointed, so anointed. He is I had worshiper. him on last week yeah, to sing, sit here next to him, and he's worshiping. You just feel this... You just want him to keep going. I even told him, let's just keep going. And, and he's like, I already sang twice. You know? So so he'll be he'll be there. He'll actually, I'm going to sing a song with him uh, on the 20th. So that'll be probably what? the first. Yes, I'm going to do it. I sing a little <laughs> stuff on YouTube. You know, I do my little thing there. But this time I'm going to actually put it out there and, and sing a song with him. So. So if I'm you guys want to, yeah, you need, you, I need lots of prayers well, for that saying, day. Lots of prayers Lord. for yeah. that yeah. day. So. <laughs> um, so just keep us in your prayers. Um, we will keep you in ours. You can definitely call us if you want to share anything or even if you want a prayer about something. 810-449-2247. Um, also keep, um, you know, Flint Talk Radio in your prayers. That, that the Lord yes. just continue to lift them, you know, because they donate a lot of the time and the funds yes, for do. this, you know. And just that he continue to lift them and lift this station up so that more people can hear the word of God and get Amen. saved through that. Um, also, I'm going to have Courtney give his number in case you wanted to contact him um, mm -hmm. or to find out anything about the Hour of Compassion. So go ahead. Yeah, 734-741-3701. Uh, that's 734-741-3701. Yeah, and again, my website. Um, go ahead and uh, www.keepingfaithinyourears.com. I try to try to put not too much on there, but it ends up being long sometimes. But if you just want a word or you just want something to lift you, it's all about faith. It's about what you speak. It's about the promises that you do have through Jesus Christ. That it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've been. It, it does not matter. He loves you anyways. You are forgiven. You are free. And we love you also. So please join in next week, uh, 12 o'clock, here on Flint Talk Radio. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, yeah.